so we've already learned a little bit about the neutralization reaction uh, from our types of reactions unit. So this lesson is specifically about writing the chemical reaction between an acid and a base um, to produce a salt and water. So first thing I want you to do is take a look at the handout or here on the video. On the left side of the handout, you have a list of 18 common acids. Well, common acids have a couple things in common. One thing is the chemical formula for an acid, for our purposes, always starts with a hydrogen ion. It's an ionic compound, so it has hydrogen as the cation, so it's an H+, and then it has an anion. And you can see that if you scroll down the list of 18 acids, there's a lot of different anions that can form common acids. All right, so also another thing to notice is that every compound that's an acid has the word acid in the name. It makes it really easy to figure out that you have a neutralization reaction. Now take a look at the common bases. These are strong bases, and they're all strong bases because they contain the hydroxide ion. So if you look down the chemical formula here, they all have hydroxide ion as the anion in this case. That's a negative one ion. So most of these bases are formed from a cation that's a metal, um, which is positive, with hydroxide. Now some of them have more than one hydroxide in the chemical formula, and the reason why is because of the charge on the cation. For example, calcium hydroxide has a chemical formula of CaOH with a subscript 2. If you look on your periodic table, you'll note that calcium has a plus 1, um, sorry, calcium has a plus 2 charge on the ion, hydroxide has a minus 1, so therefore we must have a subscript 2 with the hydroxide ion. So we know we have an acid-base reaction, a neutralization reaction, when we react an acid with a base. So what I'm going to teach you in this lesson is how to predict the products. Now we always say that they produce a quote-unquote salt plus water. Um, so the water is the easy part. We all know the chemical formula for water is H2O and it's a liquid. But what do we mean by the salt? Well, the salt is the combination of the anion from the acid, that's not the H+, the anion, and the cation from the base, that is not the OH. So basically, essentially what happens is you take the other half of the acid and the other half of the base, put it together into an ionic compound, and you have your salt. All right, so we're going to work through a couple of examples together. So if you look at the first example here, I already have the um, work written out for this one. All right, so first thing you're going to do is read this chemical, uh, the description of the reaction. So in this example, we have chloric acid, which is combined with magnesium hydroxide. So we're going to write the balanced neutralization reaction for this, um, for this reaction. So to start off, you're going to go to the list. You can find the chemical formula of the common acids in the list. So if you look up ahead, you have chloric acid is HClO3. Again, that comes straight from the list of 18 common acids, plus magnesium hydroxide. Again, you can find that in the list, MgOH2. Make sure that subscript 2 is outside the parentheses because we want two of everything inside. Okay, well, we know one of the products is water. So let's go ahead and put that in. So you're going to make an arrow, and you're going to write H2O as one of your products. Now, the tricky part is finding out, figuring out what the salt is going to be. So here, you want to write down the anion of the acid and the cation from the base. So in this case, the cation is Mg2+, and the anion is ClO3-. minus. All right, if you can't remember the charges on the polyatomic ions, then you can just look it up on your polyatomic ions sheet that you should have in your notes. Well, actually, it's in your uh, lab notebook. Okay, so now you write a balanced compound between those two anions. So here, magnesium has a plus two charge, and the chlorate ion, ClO3, has a minus one, which means we have to have 
two of the minus twos to balance out one of the plus two. So we're going to have a chemical formula for our salt. It's going to be Mg parentheses ClO3 N parentheses subscript 2. Now that we know what our quote unquote salt is, we're going to add it as a product. So that compound is going to become our product. So now we have a chemical equation. The only thing left is to balance it. The balancing has to come last. Okay, once you have all the chemical formulas correct, then you can add your coefficients in to balance it. Here, to make it a balanced chemical equation, we need a coefficient 2 in front of the HClO3, and we need a 2 in front of water. Okay, so let's try one together. I'm going to scroll down here. All right, the next one is phosphoric acid is con combined with silver hydroxide. Your first job is to go to the list and look up the chemical formulas. All right, so we're going to do that. I happen to know them off the top of my head, so I'm going to try to type them in here. Phosphoric acid, H3PO4. PO4. And silver hydroxide. Again, look that up from the list. Not all of you are chemistry teachers. You don't have them memorized like I do. All right, and an arrow. Okay, so we have our acid, we have our base. The, let's take care of the water first. So now we're going to write water as a product, H2O, subscript 2, okay, and plus. And now we're going to leave that blank for a minute, and we're going to figure out what our salt is going to be. So what I'm going to do is, first thing I'm going to do is look up the charge on silver on my periodic table. Aha! If you look on your periodic table, you have it marked. Silver is always a plus one. So Ag, so let's write down the cation. So Ag is a plus one. Okay. And the so that's the cation from the base. Now we need the anion from the acid. Now here, I suggest that you look it up on your polyatomic ion sheet. PO4 is a polyatomic ion, and you can look up the charge there. It has a charge. I just so happen to know it, but you don't have to memorize the charges of minus 3. Okay, so we have a cation. We have an anion. Let's put it together into a compound. Well, what do you think? We have a plus one and we have a minus three. Yep, I can hear you shouting it out. We need a subscript three. So our chemical formula is gonna be Ag3 and PO4. We don't need parentheses for the PO4, but it's not gonna make it wrong if you like to put them in, okay? If you don't have a subscript with the polyatomic ion, you don't have to put the uh, parentheses. Uh, but if you like to have them there just because, that's fine. It doesn't make it wrong. Okay, so now that I have that, I'm just going to put it right into my chemical formula. And ta-da! I have a complete equation for my neutralization reaction. The only thing i got to do now is make it balanced. Now, if you look carefully here, we have three AGs in the product side, but only one here. So I'm going to start by putting a three there. And then... I probably need, now that brings me up to six H's, so I need a three here. Okay, and now I have a complete balanced neutralization reaction for phosphoric acid combining with silver hydroxide. Okay, the only last thing we can do, if you want, is to write in the states of matter. This is going to be aqueous, oopsies, AQ. Water is always going to be liquid. It's not aqueous because it doesn't dissolve in itself. We've already talked about that. This, uh, the acid and the base are aqueous solutions, so we can just put AQ after this. Okay, there's usually no precipitate in a neutralization reaction. All right, now your job is to write the neutralization reaction for the rest of the reactions on this sheet. So there are five, four more. And once you're done, as you go, you can check your answers. And I want you to ask questions with your neighbor and discuss it with your neighbor as needed.